for a recent project, I did a couple of style tests where I take like a common um, UI element like a login screen or um, the hero section of a website or a 404 page and I just kind of have fun experimenting with typography, colors, photo styles, patterns and shapes. And I'm essentially like starting the um, kind of the early stages of a design system so that uh, when my client has reviewed and approved a wireframe for like a website or an app, um, I can then begin to uh, flesh out that design system that I've created, like started to create in my style test and apply it uh, to that wireframe. So it's kind of like a, a neat way to go about that. And so um, recently I created this style test. Um, and after the fact, I kind of thought this would be a really fun project um, to do a tutorial on. And anybody who is just starting out in Sketch or um, doesn't even own the program yet and wants to get into it, this would be kind of um, a great way to learn um, how to begin. So without further ado, let's jump into a new document and get started. All right, so we're gonna start off by creating an artboard. You can do that by hitting A, and if you click and drag, you create an artboard of your own kind of like custom size, and you can um, set specific height and width by pixels over here. Um, but Sketch actually does a great job if you click A and don't click and drag. They've got the preset sizes for different devices over here on the right. Um, so if you click on the dropdown, they've got Apple, Android, responsive web, which would be like a website, paper sizes. So we're gonna stick with Apple and just simply click once on iPhone 10, and um, we've got the exact dimensions of the iPhone 10 screen right there. All right, we're gonna start by um, clicking and dragging with um, R, uh, the rectangle tool. I brought that up by clicking R and getting rid of our border. And what I love about these shapes is that um, they're really quite versatile. Um, so if you click on fill, there's actually different categories for what this um, shape can contain. So I can go ahead and um, give it my blue color. I can give it a linear gradient, radial gradient, angle gradient, um, noise, or an image. And so that's like what we're gonna do. I'm gonna bring in my tennis player image. And it's automatically set the um, settings of how that image fills the container to fill, uh, which also means um, keep the proportions of the image. Don't stretch the image, just fill the container, but keep its proportions. All right, you could also uh, do the same thing by creating a mask, but this is just a really simple and easy way uh, to add your image. The other thing I love is that um, you can add another fill into this same shape. So um, instead of having to create another rectangle uh, and having to keep, keep track of like a bunch of different layers, I have that one layer from my background that has kind of like multiple fills in it. Um, I bring that up because um, I'm going to have kind of like my inputs done here in the bottom third. And so I want to have a little bit of an overlay over this so that my white text is nice and readable. All right, so I'm going to add a fill and we're going to be using a linear gradient. And uh, way this works is that there's two stops on each end. Um, you can add a stop by clicking inside of that field. And um, uh, the larger circle represents the one that's selected and the smaller circle represents the one that's not. I'm going to click and drag this up to the top. Um, so for example, uh, if I wanted to make sure that the colors were kind of like in the corners, I could do that. Um, but we're going to leave this perfectly vertical. All right, so at the bottom, um, whoops, let me grab my blue color. Um, so at the bottom, I want it to be uh, more opaque than at the top. At the top, I want it to be uh, zero. All right, so if I turn off this layer, you see that there's this kind of like soft, uh, lovely gradient of my blue color leading up to the top. That just means that uh, my input fields are gonna be uh, right around here in this section. are gonna have a blue uh, overlay underneath it 
just to make sure that there's nice strong contrast with the white text. All right, we can come back later and mess with that overlay if we need to. And then I want to lock this layer so that as I begin adding elements on top of it, uh, I'm not going to disturb this. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually name this uh, BG for background, and then I can lock it by clicking Command Shift L, or I can hold on the Option button and hover over the layer and then click the lock icon. All right, awesome. I think the next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and um, create our button. Um, so to use this button, I'm actually going to be using a plugin from Google. Uh, so they, um, Google has created this material design system. Uh, it's basically not a specific style of how something looks, but it's a system for creating styles. It's kind of like a framework for how um, you create those styles. Um, I really like the way that they've created shadows because they've actually kind of done all of this research into how shadows are created. So they've done like, um, they've taken like actual paper and um, used um, like fill lights to create shadows and they've studied those shadows and then kind of interpolated that into sketch. So it's just, they've done all this homework for us and I just love the way that it works. But anyways, uh, if you go to Google's um, like material um, website, uh, I'll look it up and make sure to link it in the description. You can download um, basically like all of the symbols for how to create a material design um, thing. <laughs> um, and so uh, over here, I'm going to be using that plugin. Um, and I'm going to add a shadow. All right, so basically this is like um, a symbol. We're going to cover symbols in a second, but this is a symbol that um, Google has created with the shadow beneath it. Let me just give you an example of how cool these shadows are. So uh, essentially like 2DP would be something that's really like a, a sheet of paper that's um, lifted up above a surface of like a table, for example, just barely. Um, six is kind of like lifted up a little bit higher. And then the very um, largest shadow you'll see is like lifted up quite a bit from the surface. So I just love how they give you this range of um, how to represent your shadows. We're going to be using this one, the 6DP, because with the blue overlay in the background, we just want to make sure there's enough shadow to give the button some distinction. All right. Um, instead of using this as, um, uh, instead of using like their system for the overrides and everything, I'm actually just going to detach uh, this from the simple. Uh, ungroup it because there's actually two shapes and then now we have access to the particular shadow so now you can see kind of like how they've created their shadow system and there's actually three different shadows to this shape uh, with different settings so just really nifty and then I'm gonna add my uh, blue color as the fill I'm gonna bring the transparency down of the blue to about 80 percent and I'm going to name this, give this a layer style uh, button. All right, layer styles are great because um, instead of having to recreate, like let's say I had was working on multiple screens, instead of having to recreate that style over and over and over again, I can simply create a shape, add my layer style. Oops, maybe because it's not on the artboard. Oh, I can't think to bring it over. All right, hold on. Put it over here, add my layer style, and boom. Now um, my this shape that I created has the same exact settings that I gave to this shape over here. All right, let's work on our button. So I know that I want uh, kind of the width of my elements at the bottom to be 275. That was just kind of like personal preference. Um, bring it over to the middle until it snaps to the guide, and then I'm going to add my text. Sign in. All right, um, that's neat. Uh, my yellow um, was already selected. I'm going to be using a Verda. It's uh, really nice, bold, kind of sans serif, very friendly. I really like this typeface. And um, I'm going to be using extra bold. I like um, uh, uh, I like the weight. Actually, I actually want to bring the bold, the weight down to bold. That's a little bit more readable. Um, get rid of the character spacing and bring this down to about 18. All right. 
next I'll center align it, align it to the middle of the artboard, and then I'm gonna go ahead and create a new text style and call it uh, button text. Uh, whoops, I misspelled that. All right, so um, text styles work the same way that um, styles do for shapes. So now if um, I create a whole new piece of text and uh, let's say it was different, like it was the blue, all I have to do is add my layer to it and it's gonna take on the same um, aspects of this. All right, uh, next I'm gonna center align it within this field and I'm gonna be using an eight pixel spacing system. Uh, what that means is that whenever I space something out, it's gonna be a multiple of eight. Uh, so what that means is that, let me kind of like scrunch this down. All right, so this is now the exact height of the label. And so if I add eight pixels above and below, that would be 16. And uh, the great thing about Sketch is that here in the inspector, you can go ahead and make it do the math for you. And you can also tell it like where you want the origin of that transformation to occur. So if I uh, add M for middle, it's gonna grow from the middle out. All right, so that's not quite um, large enough. So let me add another eight. And uh, let me do it one more time. All right, perfect, yeah. I like how that looks. All right, so right there is our sign-in button. Group it, name my layer, and let's create a symbol. So I mentioned that I would bring this up later, but essentially uh, what happens when you create a symbol is that it takes uh, that group or that layer that you're creating a symbol out of and it kind of like removes it to the symbols page. Now this, this element right here, it's actually an instance of the symbol that lives on the symbols page. If you know Plato, he kind of talks about like the, the platonic ideal, how there's like um, rudimentary forms that are kind of like an approximation or an instance of this like ideal that lives somewhere in heaven. <laughs> but anyways, that's like kind of like the idea here is that these are instances of like the true form that lives over here in the symbols page. So what's lovely about this is let's say if I have, um, I'm creating like a whole app for this like tennis app. Um, I could have multiple buttons in different places. And um, if I make a change to the symbol, like let's say uh, I want this to be yellow. Now every single instance of that symbol is yellow. Um, so just a really powerful way to um, kind of have control over your different components. The other great thing about symbols is that you have the option to create overrides. So like, for example, um, right now, sign in is a text that's displaying in the middle. I could have it say, log in. And it's overriding uh, the text that's in the middle here. But you'll notice in the symbols, sign in is still uh, the text. All right, so that's just kind of like a quick intro to symbols. Now let's create the inputs um, that go above the button. That's the uh, field for the user to be able to create their username and their password or just enter the username and password, sorry, and then sign in. All right, so first we're gonna create just a simple line. I hit L to bring up the line tool. Um, uh, if I click and drag, I can kind of create at any angle, but if I hold shift, it's gonna constrain it um, to be perfectly level. I'm gonna make it 275 pixels exactly. And then I'm gonna center it in my artboard. All right, so now you can see that the edge of this line is perfectly aligned to the edge of the button. I'm gonna give this some styling. So instead of um, that kind of gray, I'm gonna make sure it's white. And I'm gonna bring down the opacity to 50% and create a layer style. I'm gonna call it HR. That's kind of like the, um, uh, I think it's the uh, HTML for like a line on a website when you code your website. All right. 
Um, next, I'm going to bring in an icon. I'm going to be using Google's uh, material design icons, and there's a great plugin um, that lets you access all of those icons, bring it into your file as a symbol. Uh, so I'll make sure to look up the um, link and leave it in the description, but I'm going to access the plugin called Sketch Material, click Icons, and I'm basically looking for uh, kind of like a profile image. Pro, uh, here it is. Uh, I don't know why it's called uh, perm. <laughs> uh, I don't know what that means, but okay. All right, so let's get rid of that. Let's bring this onto the artboard. And then just to explain how this plugin works, um, just like this button down here, uh, this icon is actually just an instance of a symbol that was created uh, for me by the plugin. So the other thing that's interesting about um, the way that this symbol works, <coughs> excuse me, is that um, uh, if I uh, open up the folder here, you notice that there's a shape and then there's this color and the shape is actually um, masking the color. Um, what that lets me do is that when I go back to uh, uh, my design, I can override the color of the icon um, using uh, these color symbols. All right, so let me show you what I mean. Um, I'm going to call this palette blue. I'll call this palette uh, yellow. And by um, giving it like the first, by calling it palette forward slash something, I'm grouping it together so that Sketch knows these are part, these symbols are kind of like part of the same category. White, right, and then blue, yellow, and white. Ugh, get out of there. <laughs> All right. Um, uh, oh, there it is. I couldn't see my symbol. All right, so now um, uh, that perm icon, I'm not, still not sure why it's called perm, but uh, the icon is selected with the profile and you'll see that now my um, uh, color symbols are here for me to override. So I can click on white and um, the symbol is now white. I'm going to bring its opacity down. I want it to be uh, quite transparent. I'm actually bring it down to 25%. All right, so I'm going to align it to the bottom and to the left. And then using my spacing system, uh, remember I want to use multiples of eight. I'm going to advance it. Um, oops. I'm going to advance it uh, eight pixels. Perfect. <coughs> Excuse me, I have a little bit of a cough. All right, next I want to add my uh, plate placeholder text. Username, I can hardly see it because it's blue. Let's change it over to white and then um, change it to regular. And I really like um, using 16 pixels is kind of like the base size for your font system, your typeface system. Um, so I'm gonna start with 16. And I'm going to give it just a little bit of letter spacing to make sure it's nice and legible. And I'm going to bring the opacity down. Um, I still want it to be nice and legible, but I'm going to bring it down to 75%. And I think I'm going to bring this up to 50. Okay. I'm going to align it to the bottom of the icon there and then move it over eight pixels. Perfect. Um, if I zoom out, even though it's aligned perfectly to the bottom of the icon, it feels like it's below it. So I'm just kind of like eyeball it and bring it up a little bit. So it's nudged it up two pixels. All right. And that is our, um, I'm going to make this just a tad bolder. So my bold. Okay. That is, um, our input. So just like we did with the button, we're not going to create a symbol. And we're going to call this uh, input. If I go over to um, 
my input, you'll see that I can't see any of the elements on it because this artboard is, um, it's white taking on a white artboard. So what I can do is I can give it a background color. And if I deselect include and export, uh, what that means is that, um, like this color could be totally different. Like it could be black. And when I go back to my instance, that black is not going to show up. So just kind of like a handy tip for uh, um, your symbols. All right, the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to rename this layer instead of username, um, input label, and rename this icon. Because when I duplicate that layer, now when I do the overrides, it's going to let me like, um, I'm going to know exactly what this means. Now, I mean, you know, there's just two labels here. So like, it's kind of obvious what that is. And it even has um, a placeholder text of the original symbol there. But when you're using um, symbols, like tons of symbols across this huge document, it's really helpful to know what that override is for. All right, so it's going to be a password. And then we got to bring in a, we need to bring in a new symbol for password. So I'm going to use that same plugin, sketch material, icons, and we're just going to look for a lock. And uh, I like this one because it matches um, icon that we already have. And so I should be able now to add the lock and change it to white. All right, super easy. All right. Um, I'm going to uh, space these out um, using my spacing system. So I'm holding option uh, with the layer selected and hovering over another layer. It's going to tell me like, um, <coughs> excuse me, how many layers there are in relation to the thing I'm pointing at. And so I can now just kind of nudge this layer up. I know exactly how many pixels is between them. Um, I'm going to go ahead and give this um, okay, that's perfect. All right, and then I want to add my text below the button that lets uh, folks who have never signed into the app be able to sign up and create um, a profile. I want to de-emphasize this because the main call to action on this screen is to sign in. I don't want this to compete with that. So I'm going to really de-emphasize it by uh, lowering this to 12 pixels and lowering the opacity to 50%. All um, Sorry, for some reason it isn't showing me. Um, okay. Um, it isn't showing me exactly, but I'm just going to go down 10 and then 1, 2. All right. Oh, there we go. All right, so that is 8 pixels. I'm going to zoom in a little bit and then bring over another one. And I'm going to bring this up to 100% opacity. Do sign, sign up. Oops. Uh, as experimenting with regular, let's keep it semi bold just to make sure it's nice and legible. One, two, three, four. All right. So that's essentially um, our like sign in. Um, so what I'll do now is I'm going to group these and do, um, sign up link and then do a marquee box over all of these elements and group them together and call it, um, uh, inputs. All right. And then I'd like to position these, um, kind of in the, lower third of the screen. So I'm just going to use uh, rectangles. Um, so I've created one here. If I hold option 
and shift, click and drag. I've created another rectangle of the exact same size that is um, butting up exactly against this original ship. And if I hit Command D for duplicate, um, let me zoom out a little bit. And this is not quite touching. All right, but anyways, what that lets me do is now I can fix uh, my sign and stuff to exactly kind of like the third um, uh, um, kind of a third of the way down, I guess, or two thirds, I guess. Um, I just kind of like the math of that, if you will. And then uh, I'm going to hop back into uh, my background and just kind of mess with my gradient a little bit and make sure that um, this text is nice and legible. So one way I can do that is I can actually bring uh, this marker here up to uh, my input. And what that means is that, oh, I don't like how it's not straight. Okay, there we go. Um, if I lower this, it means that um, where I set that um, slider, uh, everything down here is going to remain the same opacity and then it's going to start kind of gradating down to 0% opacity. All right, and then I think that I can um, bring this up just a tad more. Perfect, okay, yeah. I think that needed that extra 10% up to 60% opacity just to be nice and legible. All right, next is we're gonna create that, um, kind of like that uh, tennis court, uh, those lines um, that represented a tennis court. And they weren't like, um, they weren't perfectly proportional. So if there's a, a tennis player that's watching this, you'll think like, uh, that is not what a tennis court looks like. It's not intended to, it's just kind of like, um, uh, it's kind of obvious that it's what a tennis court looks like, but it's not exactly proportional, but uh, it doesn't exactly have to be, right? All right, so we're going to start off by creating a line. We're going to steal the style of the HR line, but I want it to be not quite as noticeable. So I'm going to bring the opacity down to 25% um, and then create a new layer style and call it tennis court. Um, if I click over here in the layers list on the artboard, it's going to tell me the width of the artboard is 375. So I can make this line 375 and align it to the middle. And I'm gonna know that this line is now um, exactly the full width of the screen. All right, then I'm gonna use my spacing system uh, to kind of get this. Um, um, maybe just one more, 40 pixels. Okay, yeah, I like how that looks. All right, next is I want to create a new line that is going to kind of like align to the edges of these. Um, all right, so um, with the align tool, the way it works is if you have both elements selected, and then I'm going to use align layer to left. It's going to take um, it's going to take the element with the farthest extreme and say, okay, that's the anchor. So um, since this edge is kind of like the farthest extreme and this one is closer to the middle, if I click align left, it's going to bring the line over to the extreme of this group. All right, perfect. I'm going to zoom in and just make sure that this is perfectly centered there. All right, and then I'm going to do the same thing. Um, so I held option, oops, uh, let me lock my background layer. Option, shift and click. And then it should be able to snap, oh, it's not, okay. I'll just align it. All right, and then I essentially want another line um, uh, kind of at, at the top up here. I'm going to add my tennis, oops, 
at my tennis court style. And then I'm just gonna make sure that this is perfectly aligned. Great. And then I'm gonna use my spacing system to kind of space it uh, where I want it. All right, so I know that my logo, uh, it's just a kind of like a piece of text in Averta, our typeface, but I want it to sit above this line. So I wanted to make, make sure there's plenty of room. Um, so we're gonna add just a little bit more space. All right, so 56. Um, next, I'll add another line, and I'm gonna use a rectangle like we did previously just to make sure it's right in the middle. All right, I think that's just a smudge on the court. <laughs> okay, that is. All right, and then last, there's that kind of like that vertical line that goes up here. So, I'll just bring this down. And then, um, if I click on both of these lines, I can align this center line to the middle of that one. And it was actually already center aligned. Look at that. <laughs> All right, let me make sure I'm zoomed in. All right. All right, and that is our tennis court. Love it. Um, the reason it disappeared is because when I grouped it, it actually fell below the background. So in my layers list, I'm just going to bring it back up above. All right, and I'm going to call this tennis court. All right, and I think the very last thing I'll do is uh, add my logo match. All right, so what I'm going to do is uh, bring the size of this up to 24, just to make sure it's kind of like the largest thing. Um, on the on the screen, change it to my yellow color. Um, if you click the options, it's little like gear. Um, these are these are basically CSS classes that you can add uh, in Sketch. They're they're not CSS classes. They're just kind of like approximating CSS classes. So in CSS, you can make sure that uh, you can use something called text transform to make sure everything is uppercase. That's essentially what we're doing here, and then just give it a little bit of letter spacing, and let's make it extra bold. All right, I'm gonna fix it to uh, on top of this line, and then just kind of nudge it over a little bit so that it's not quite on the line itself. One, two, three, four. All right. Perfect, okay, so um, I think that's pretty much it as far as this design goes. Thank you so much for following along. I hope this video was helpful for you if uh, you're just getting into Sketch or you just wanna learn more about um, uh, UI, UX kind of stuff. Um, before you leave the video, make sure that you hit subscribe so that as I release new videos, whether it's on um, developing websites and Webflow, um, branding work, UI work like this, you'll get notified and you can watch those videos and uh, all those different links I mentioned, I'll make sure I leave those in the description. And uh, like I said, thanks so much for uh, sticking with me as we created this together. Thanks and uh, have a good one.